I would like to share with you a, a very important point, which is raised by the Pachad Yitzchak, Rabbi Yitzchak Putin Zetzal, and it's as follows. There are really two inyanim, two processes happening during Sukkot. Two processes. One process is, he brings down from the morale. The Rav points out, that Sukkot is the Gemar of the Shlosh Regalim. There are three major Regalim, three major holidays, Pesach, Shavuos, and the last one is Sukkot. They follow, it says that the, the, the order of the year, it's the beginning of the year, it's Pesach, it's Man Aviv, the Zman cuts at a time when you cut the, 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 uh, the produce, is already Shavuos time, the Rashi's Bukharayim, you bring the first fruits, and then Sukkot is Mana Asif, the time to gather everything in and bring it home. That is the process of the three Regalim, the Shlosh Regalim, and Sukkot is the culmination of these three. So it's one of the three Regalim. There's another Nakuda in Sukkot which is not shared by the other Regalim. And it's as follows. Sukkot is also a culmination and a continuation of sorts from Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, I'll show you in a minute, have a connection to Sukkot. So it comes out that Sukkot, he points out, is different than everyone. The Shlosh Regalim, Pesach and Shavuos are their, their Shlosh Regalim. Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, uh, uh, <coughs> are special Yom Yomei Adin and Yomei Ratzon. They're not Shlosh Regalim. Sukkot is both. Sukkot is one of the Shlosh Regalim, and it's also the culmination and the continuation of Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. How do we see that it's a continuation of Yom Kippur? That's, that's one of the Shlosh Regalim is obvious. First of all, he brings the Medrash, a famous Medrash. The Medrash says that every year when we're judged on Rosh Hashanah and ultimately we come to Yom Kippurim, there's a dim with and there's a judgment not only in us personally, but the Medrash says between ourselves and the Umos Olam. It's a very interesting concept. That not only are we being judged on our own personal status with the Kodesh Baruch Hu, but also the Klai Yisrael is being judged versus the Umos Olam. And nobody knows who's going to win. It's not clear. You go into Ran Yom Kippurim, it's not clear who's going to win. This is a Medrash, I'm paraphrasing. We come out with the Abba Minim, with particularly with the Lulav, the Shavit Shel Melech, the staff of the king, and that shows that we're victorious. Now, we're going to come back to what this concept of the Shavit of the Melech is. We now come back to later. But what do we see? That the Arba Minim are a Hamshech of the Din, and it's a way of a Gilui of the Din of what happened on Yom Kippurim. There was some sort of a conflict between ourselves and Yom Olam, and we show that we are victorious with the Arba Minim. Number one. Number two. You should know another point. Rishon the Cheshman of Anoseichem. It's the first day of your sins, Rosh, the beginning of Sukkot. Four days between Rosh Hashanah and Sukkot. Kilo, we didn't sin. It's a big problem. How could we didn't sin? Four days is a free ride. And you guys are saying to me, Rabbi, where were you on Yom Kippur? Why didn't you tell me this one? I see you smiling, right? You, hey, you want a free ride? There's no free ride. There is no free ride. Hevra, get it straight. And there never will be one. However, so the, the, the Shlo learns, it's not the Pshat that there's a Kilu, nothing goes, we can't get any sins, God forbid. Just means I'll be rove. Since we're Isaac ben Mitzvah, we're involved in getting the Abba Mini and building our circuits and preparing for Yom Tov, so then we're not doing a verus. But he brings that one to Kadmonim and learns, no, that it's more than that. 
that really those four days are a sniff cut in there, a continuation, a small sniff, a continuation of Yom Kippurim, and there's a slich and a kapara even on those four days. So that the four days are covered, and that's why we don't say Tachanun, and then now we come to Sukkot. So Sukkot, we see now, is also connected. The four days are a continuation of Bishul of Yom Kippur, and the, then we have Sukkot itself. Sukkot itself, we come out with the Arba meaning shown with Victorious and Din. Next point, how it, there's another core point that, Rush, that Sukkot is, is, has to do with Yom Kippur. And it's as follows. There's a famous kasha. The Torah asks the kasha. Why is it we keep Sukkot when we do? It's Zechel Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. It's a remembrance of going out from Egypt. So why do we keep Sukkot when we keep it? We should keep it in Nisan, like we do Pesach, somewhere around over there. It's a famous kasha. So it comes along the Torah, famous answer, and he says, look, the Torah wanted us to keep sukkahs when we do our yeshiva, our sitting in the sukkah should be nikaret. It should be clear that's the same mitzvah. It should be clear it's the same mitzvah. If we would go out in Nisan time, in the spring, that's when everyone goes out to the summer, that's the beginning of the spring is towards the summer. If we would go out then, they, they, it wouldn't be clear that we're going out with shame mitzvah. Okay? That's the tour. The Vilna Gon, famous Vilna Gon, everyone brings this Vilna Gon. But then we're going to have to remember that tour and the Vilna Gon in a minute. The Vilna Gon says otherwise. He says like this. When we were chaited by the Cheta Ego, we lost the Anani HaKavod. Remember, when you sit in the sukkah, you have to remember Anani HaKavod. However, I just want to remind you parenthetically that this is one of the times, every time you want to be mitzvah, you, see a mitzvah, you just have to think L'Shem Mitzvah, right? You want to do a mitzvah, you say, I want to do L'Shem Mitzvah. This is one of the mitzvahs where the Torah itself gives you a kavana, and many hold it's ma'akiv. There's a, there's a kavana that the Torah says to have beyond that I just want to do the mitzvah, and what's that? Remembering the Anani covenant, remembering the clouds of glory that Hashem surrounded us in the desert. He led us in the desert. Now listen. Those are not yet covered, those clouds of glory. Listen to this. When we were chaited by the Cheta Egel, we lost the clouds of glory. The Ananiya covered left. Yeah? The Ananiya covered left. And they came back. You know when they came back? They came back on the Tesvav Sukkos, Tesvav Tishrei. You want to know why? Moshe Rabbeinu was, went up, um, was on Yom Kippurim. Now, Yom Kippurim was a day of Slicha Kapara. He was forgiven for the Cheta Egel. Klai Yisrael was forgiven for the Cheta Egel, and that's the whole Mahalach of Tshuva. That's the whole process of Tshuva. And that was with the special introduction of the Yud Gimel Midos. Klai Yisrael was sinned by the Golden Calf. On Yom Kippurim, the Hashem uh, forgave us, and he introduced the Yud Gimel Midos of prayer. That's what we say every time that we want to pray and invoke Rachamim for the Kaddish Baruch Hu. Hashem Hashem, Kel Rachum Lechanun. And that was Maimed HaSinai, that was a second giving of the Torah. The second Luchos were given on Yom Kippurim. Moshe Rabbeinu came down on Yud Aleph. He came down on the 11th, and he commanded the Jewish people to build the Mishkan. Okay, on Yud Aleph, he told them to build the Mishkan, the tabernacle. For two days, Yud Beis and Yud Gimel, they all brought their Nedavas for the Mishkan. On Yud Dalid, they gave it over to the Chachmei Leif, to so the people who were going to actually do the work. And they started the work, says the Vilna Gon, on Tezvav. When they started the work <coughs> for the beginning, building of the Mishkan, at that point, the Anani Akavi returned. The Anani covered the clouds of glory which had gone away with the Chet Ego, now that we were forgiven for the, the Chet Ego, and we were about to build the Mishkan, which, by the way, is a way of rectifying the Chet Ego. We're going to bring down the Shechina in our midst in a mutter fashion, that's the Basil Levi. By doing so, we're bringing down the Shechina in a way which is allowed, not in a way which is not allowed. 
So when we build that Mishkan and we're forgiven for the ego, the Anani Akavi come back. When is that? The first day, Tesvav of Tishrei. So Tesvav Tishrei is the time of the return of the Anani Akavod. Those Anani Akavod are, it's a whole different picture of why we keep sukkahs when we do. It's not just that it should be that we're going there for the purpose of mitzvah. It's that's when we got the Anani Akavod. The whole mitzvah is the Zechar Anani Akavod, remembering the clouds of glory. Now, so there are two elements over here. One element of sukkahs is it's part of the Shlosh Regalim. It's part of the three festivals. And it is the culmination and the continuation, as it were, of Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippurim, and then Sukkot. With this, I'd like to offer you, now let's think about it. We come out with an unbelievable idea. That means there's really two inyanim going on simultaneously in the sukkah. One is one of the shlosh regolim. There's the sukkah of the shlosh regolim. And there's the sukkah, which is the sukkah of tshuva, the, tshuva, the sukkah that shows what we have kapara from the Rebbe Shalom, the sukkah of the Ananiya covered, the sukkah of the Ushbizim. They're two different sukkahs. It's the same sukkah, but it has two things going on simultaneously. If that's, according to this idea, you can understand that all the mitzvahs that we keep, they can be understood in two different ways. They have both, there's two parallel things going on at the same time. For instance, the simple shot in the Chaga Asif, simple shot in the Chaga Asif, the time of gathering in the grain, is that when you gather in the grain, there's a, there's a tendency to become haughty, to be a, become a bald guy, but to think that I'm rich, to think that I, ha, I, I become, an, I, I start to be enamored by this world, by Olam Azeh. So the Torah says, okay, wait a minute, you've got your grain, I, you know, you have to leave your, your house and go into a sukkah. You have to leave your house and all your wealth and all your bounty and go and live in a little hut because we don't want you to get the wrong idea. Olam Azeh is not what it's all about. So there's a simple idea in sukkahs that the wealth of this world, we have to put it in its place and therefore we need to go into sukkah and keep our perspective. That's the... Leave your house and go into a sukkah. The, the malbim that goes as far as the same, and mainly that fits very well if you learn sukkah's mamish. There's a machlekes. There's an argument in Chazal. Of one, we say, Laman yedu der Satan keep a sukkah so sharp as ben Israel. I took you out in sukkahs. What kind of sukkahs are we talking about? You know what's a machlekes? One man, one tana says it means sukkah's mamish. Hashem, we lived in sukkahs in the desert. And the other one says it's the Ananiya Kavod. It's the clouds of glory or the sukkah that we're referring to. That's what you have to remember. There's two opinions. Well, the way we're learning, we can learn that there's really two things going on here at the same time. On the one hand, the sukkah's mamish means you look at sukkahs, the ikr of sukkahs is to remember the concept that we have to go into the sukkah, the simple sukkah. So is Goran Vyekiv. It's made out of very, very flimsy material. Get away from your house. Put the gashmis, put the physicality of this world in its proper place. Be machni yourself. Take the arba minim. What are the arba minim? The arba minim are maramas <coughs> to the, all the avarim of a man. The arba minim are the minim are the species which, which come from water. Shake them. Give back your wealth to a Kaddish Baruch Hu. Show them that all that wealth you got, you're going to give it to Hashem. But you go into a simple sukkah. That sukkah is mamish. But there's another opinion, Ananiya Kavod. Ananiya Kavod is looking at the Chag of sukkahs from another perspective. Don't look at it only from the simple perspective of what's one of the Shlosh Regalim, but it's really a combination of Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippurim. Klai Yisrael has just been forgiven for the Chet Egel. Klai Yisrael is now Kapara and Slicha from Hashem. Klai Yisrael is now living with the Shem Shemayim Chal in the sukkah. Klai Yisrael is now living with the Rabbana Shalom, B'Tzela Dan Nusa. You know that there are certain groups in Klaus who don't even want to sleep in a sukkah because they say there's an or makiv. There's this primordial or. So much kedusha inside a sukkah, so some people don't sleep in a sukkah. We, we're, not, we're not knowing that way. There is one group that is. But, what, but that means the sukkah is so holy they can't sleep there. 
But that, that's a function of how close we just came. It's not just a question of, well, you know, we have wealth, and now we want to bend our, bend our back to a Kaddish Baruch Hu. That's for sure true, but it's much more than that. We've been forgiven for our sins. we were forgiven for the Chet Ego. We're not clean. We're living in the Olam Machuva, in the world of, of repentance, which is a Hemshech of Riyama Kippurim. So we're living with the Anani Akavod, Zeichel Anani Akavod. It's a different thing altogether. So the mitzvahs that we perform, and the sukkah itself really are two kinds of sukkahs. It's the same sukkah, but there's two things that we can be mis- relate to at the same time. One is humility, putting all of in its perspective, and the other one is slich and kapara and, and living with a Kaddish Baruch Hu after being forgiven on Yom Kippur. That being said, I'd like to offer what I consider a little bit of a chiddush, but I think it's Amis Lamito. We've discussed here in this forum on previous years the famous Gemara. At the end of time, Kodesh Baruch was going to come out with a Sefer Torah. He's going to come out with a Sefer Torah and say, who wants Scha Torah? Who wants reward for Torah? And it's going to be, there's a long, long discussion in the Talmud, in the Gemara, of what the Umos, all of the nations of the world are going to clamor around. And they're saying, we want Scha, and we want Scha, and they're going to ask for, they want, they want to get rewarded. And Hashem's going to line them up and show them that everything they did in this world, they did for themselves. They didn't do it to serve a Kodesh Baruch Hu. And even what they did to help the Jews, they did it unwittingly. I don't want to go into that part of Gemara now. And there's a long shock of Atariya. And then the Gemara goes on fighting and says, well, hey, well, you didn't give us a chance. He says, I gave you a chance. I gave you the seven mitzvahs. Yeah, but you didn't put the mountain over our head. And who says the Jews kept? There's a whole long question and answer. But the Umos Olam and the Umos Olam, the nations of the world, lose the conversation. And lo- they lose the discussion. They lost. They don't deserve it. But you know what Hashem says? You know what? I'm going to give you another mitzvah. I'm going to let you try. I'm going to give you the mitzvah sukkah. Rashi says mitzvah kala. It's cheap, inexpensive. In those days, you didn't have to put on some kishu team. You didn't have to buy mats. It was like this little, you know. It just threw it. it was easier. Oh, Kapani, it was, it was an easy mitzvah. The Gemara says, how can you give a mitzvah? Now, it's after the time. This is when Hashem has already revealed himself into the world. How can you give a mitzvah? Now is the time to do it. Not next. When Tomorrow we get the reward. In the time of reward, you can't do the mitzvah. So Hashem says, you know what? You're right. I mean, it's par- I'm, I'm paraphrasing. But I don't want that the Bria, that the creation and the people... All the Umos Olam should have some sort of a, a taina that on me, some sort of a claim that I wasn't being fair. I want to give everyone a fair chance, even though it's after the time. You got to picture what this is. Kevra, you know, imagine you're working in a store. Everyone's working, 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 working. They close the door. The, the, the paymaster's giving you how to pay. And the guy who, who was sleeping the whole time, you know, he was outside. He wants to get a paycheck. I mean, we owe you a paycheck. You didn't do anything. I, I want to do it, I want to do it. Okay, I'll see if you do a little work now. So he gives them the mitzvah su- sukkah. So what happens? Hashem, they go into, they build the sukkahs on the roof. Hashem takes out the, the sun, but Tukufa's Tammuz, he makes out a very hot sun. The non-Jews are burning in there. They run out of the sukkah and they kick it. Yorah says, well, you know, they really had a right to run out of sukkah, but sukkah because it says a mitzvah, Someone who has pain, if you're dis- in discomfort, you're not in the to sit in the sukkah. Okay? We all know that. If it's, if it's very, if it's raining in the sukkah, or if it gets extremely hot, or a lot of uh, other, something else that's going on in the sukkah, which makes it impossible for you to sit in, you're allowed to leave. Muhammad Steyer, one who has pain, is allowed to leave the sukkah. So you almost all them, Hashem took out the sun. They didn't have to sit in that sukkah. Yeah, but the more you know what the more says, but why'd they kick it? Famous piece of Gomorrah. You've heard it before. Now listen, one, why did they talk to kick the sukkah? I'll tell you why. What did they want? They only wanted reward. They came for reward. Hashem's giving out reward. He's giving out the paychecks, and they can't, they don't have any, they don't have a slip. We want reward also. They're not looking for a relationship with the Rabbanu Shalom. They're not looking to live with the Rabbanu Shalom. Hashem says, okay, you want to get some reward? Go live in my sukkah. You know what the Nisoyan was? Then the Soyan, the test was not to go in the sukkah because Hashem then pulled out the sun and made it impossible for them. 
Now Hashem is not playing games. He's not going to trick them. He offered them schar. So why is he pulling out the sun? They hold Nisoyen. Their whole test was how they leave. If they would have left, downtrodden and said, oh, well, we don't have a choice. They would, have, they would have begged Hashem again. They would have cried. They would have said, you know, let us try again. Please bring, put the sun away or let us try it again. Felt sad that they didn't have this opportunity to serve a Kodesh Baruch Hu. That would have been a good response. But instead they kicked it. They kicked it means that they don't want any, if it doesn't give me reward, I don't want any part in it. If it's not a means for me to get reward. So if I'm part there, it's meaningless to me. So he kicks it. Despises it. I don't want this. Now, why do you give him mitzvah sukkah? Taste your cane to duro. You want to live with the Kaddish Baruch Hu? You want to go and live in, a, in, in Hashem's world? You want to be able to eat and drink and live in God's world? Go ahead, sit in the sukkah. Let's see if you can be part of my world. I'd like to offer you a Kiddush. I hold it's a little bit of a Kiddush, but I hold it's Samus. According to what we're speaking, that there's really two elements in sukkah. There's one is the sukkah of the finish of the Shlosh Regalim, and the other one is the sukkah, which is the finish of Rosh Hashanah and Kippurim. He offered them number one. He did not offer them number two. There's no, and it's, it's after the time. There's no time for schar, but he's doing them a favor. He's not giving them, he's giving them the ability to do a mitzvah. Yes. They can go into the simple, I'm going to call it the simple sukkah, sukkah's mamish, and they can be machni themselves and bring them and break themselves and go out of their homes and live in a hut and know that this world's not the yikr. Yes, that they can have. But the nani are covered and that the Shem forgives them after Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippurim, and the, the, the homahalach of tshuva, that they have no relationship to. And that was never even, all, I would suggest that that wasn't even offered to them at that point. Okay, so now, this being said, I'd like to look now at the Arba Minim. The Arba Minim also are, can be looked at in two different ways. One way of looking at the Arba Minim is simply, the Gemara says that they come on Rov Mayim, as we said before. They come on most water. Since they come on most water, so therefore they are going to we, this is the time we're judged. It says, nidon. The world's judged on four times. Pesach on Tvuah, we judge for wheat on Tvuah, uh, on Pesach, a fruit on Shvuah. Man is judged on Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah, it says, and we're judged on water on Sukkot, and we do that with the Arba meaning, with the four species, which grow on water. By the way, that's the reason why as you all have found out, or you may have found out, that everything that you buy the first day sort of dried up on you, and you have problems with it, unless you know how to take care of it, right? And the esrog, you can buy an esrog, which is a bazaar, zatza, before, two weeks before Rosh Hashanah, before Yom Kippur, uh, and then on circus it just sort of shrivels, because they, they're made from water, it's all water, they're water-based. That's one way of looking at the Arba Minim, and that's true. But there's a deeper meaning to the Arba Minim. There's a much deeper meaning. We just said before the Chazal, listen to this, Hebra. We just said before the Chazal, the very famous Chazal, that we come out with the Shavit Shamelech, with the king's spear <clears throat> on Sukkot to show that we were victorious in the judgment between us and the nations of the world. You know what the Meforshim asked? I saw this in a couple of places. Tadmonim say this. The Chidor, I saw in the Bnei Yisachar, say the same word. How can we come out? What's the marshal and the nimshal? You have the parable and, and, the, and the point. In, in, the, in the parable, you're coming out with the king's spear. How do the Arba Minim, how do the four species, and particularly the Lulav, how is that the king's spear? What, it's, a, it's a Lulav. The answer is, Say to them before shame that you know what? These four species grow without the help of a malach, without the help of an angel. Everything in this world, the Gemara tells us that if a, if a plant's gonna grow, there's a malach that says to it, there's an angel that says grow. Every, there's an intermediary in Shemayim, there's an intermediary in her, heaven that allows things to grow. These four species get direct from the Rabbanu Shalom. Okay, these four species are directly 
have a hashkacha of the divine providence on them direct. Memela. So the spear, the lulav, and, and all of them are basically, they are, belong to a Kaddish Baruch. So when we come out with that, that means we're coming out with the kings, with his, 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 his spear, his, his mantle, whatever you want to call it. The Shabit Shomelech. So you know what? So they all say the what? How can we come out with the Shavit Shomelech? Um, a king can't let, how can he let you use his thing? It's the king's Shavit. The answer is, we're not only called, he's not only a king to us, a Melech, he's also our Av. Av, Shemachal, Kvodo, Kvodo, Mochel. An Av who's Michael, an Av who forgives his honor, his honor can be forgiven. So therefore, one, as an Av, as a father, he forgives us, and he also lets us use his spear. And this is not true for the nations of the world. They can't get that spear. They can't use God's, God's, you know, his, his, his symbol. That shows that we are his children, and we are victorious in Din. But it goes much further than that. It goes much further. The Av and Minim go much further. There's a famous point. The Rikanti had a dream, so they say. So it's brought down the base. This is a famous point. He had a dream, and in this dream, there was some, somebody was dreaming about the fact that they're writing the Shem Hashem, and they were separating the first three letters from the last letter. And, and uh, in, the, in the dream, he gets up and he says, no, that's not how you're supposed to write it. You're supposed to put them together. And when he woke up, he didn't know the passion. He didn't know the, the, the understanding of this dream. What was it all about? And he was omit on it, that they were lit in the place where he was at, they were, they were shaking the lulav. They had their lulav, esrog, excuse me, lulav, avavas, and <coughs> dasim in one hand. They had their, their um, esrog in the other, but they weren't putting it together. They weren't putting it together. The halacha is you, you bind the three of them together in a binding, and then you have the esrog separate. And that's bedafka, because the esrog is, it has to be alone. But when you shake them, they must be together. You're supposed to put them together. And in the town that he was at, it, where at that particular time, people were not doing as such. So he understood that you have to put it together. Meaning that he understood that the Lulav and Esra represent the, the, the osios, the letters of Hashem's name. Do you hear what I just told you? They represent the osios, the letters of God's name. Yud, K, Vav, K, the He Achrona, the last He of God's name is the Esra. And the others are the, and the first three. And there's a Machlekes actually, which what represents what? But Pashtas, the He, the Esra represents the He Achrona, the last He in God's name. And then the, the Beis Yosef brings down the Medrash. There's a there's an illusion. The Medrash says that each one of the Arba Minim, they bring a Pasuk that it refers to God. It represents Hashem himself. Each one of them. And he said, that's, the, that's, that's what it means. they all part of a God, a Kaddish Baruch Hu's name. So the Arba Minim represent the shame of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, God's name in this world, and they represent Yud K Vav K. Now, with that, I would like to describe, I want to go into something here which is unbelievable, which I've discussed before, but we have some new insight. There's a men up. There are women who are pregnant after, after circus. That means not on, not tomorrow, not tomorrow afternoon, and not on, on Shemini Yatzeret, but Yisru Chag, okay? That means after the whole holiday is finished, they basically say, Rabbanu Shalom, Bishvil Chav, Shaisa, Ochelos, Meitzadatz. Chava ate from the Eitz Adas. She caused chet of sin, of death into this world. And I'm, I'm going to paraphrase. And if I would have been at that time, I, would, I wouldn't have eaten it. I wouldn't have any pleasure from it. Just like now, I did not want to apostle. I did not want to nullify this Ezrog and the seven days of the holiday. And today I apostled it. No, she tastes it. She's going to bite into it. Can you imagine? You bite into the top, it says. And she's going to parcel the Ezra. But Dafka, she's going to parcel it when? After Sukkot. It's finished. And just like I have Hanar from this Pitim, that's how I would have had, I would have had Hanar from the Eitz Adas. Meaning, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have had it, I would have just looked at it. 
that as Hashem said to Adam and Chavah, don't, don't eat it, and they, were, they went over his command. So now accept my tefillah and my supplication that I should have a, I shouldn't die from my birth, and I should give birth without pain, and we shouldn't have any, anything that should come to us and we should be safe. Now, that's more I I want to explain to you what this means, how I understand it. One, point one, you've, you've heard from me before, or you heard from others, or you know, or you're going to learn it. And that is, we say that every Erev, right before Kabbalah Shabbos, what we say, Mishnayis, there are three things that women die, God forbid, when they give birth. Hafresh, not doing hafresh is kawa, not separating the kawa, not lighting the neros, uh, the neros and not and, and, and dam nida, not keeping nida. Three things. All of those three things are punishments for Chava's part in the Eitzah Das Tovara. Chava was punished. Women, womanhood, womankind was punished with three things. By the way, there were ten clothes. The, the Medrash says there were ten clothes. By the way, I want to tell you, and this is not really politically correct, but it's the truth. It says one of the clothes is they put rings in their ears because that makes them, it's like a shifka. Okay, that wasn't politically correct. I want they're going to expunge that from the tape. Okay, um, but that's what it says. Anyhow, it says that there are three, there are three, there are three things that women die, Rahman Islam, when they give birth because that's one of the punishments, and one is Chala. Man was called the Isa. He was like the dough of the world, and they ruined it. Two, he was like the light of the world, and they put it out. And three, Dam Nida is the tumor of the Dam of Nida, which came a result of the, of the inappropriate behavior with the Nachash. So there were three things that are a punishment for the Eitzah Das Tovarah. So therefore, this woman who's pregnant, she takes the Esrog and says, you know, I mean, I, I'm not like Chava. I made a tikkun. I did not touch it for seven days, and now I'm going to have Hanaf. There's a big obvious in this, what she says. I'll say in a minute. Now, that's number one. So, but what is it going with the opinion that the Esrog is the Eitz Adas Toivara? There are a few opinions. In the Gemara and Brachas, it brings that could have been the Ta'ena. A Ta'ena is a fig. It could have been Geffen. It could have been grapes and wine. Or it could have been Chita, wheat. That's the three opinions which are brought down in the Gemara and Brachas. But the Api Kabbalah, and the fourth opinion which is brought down in the Medrash also, but not in the Gemara and Brachas, it was the Esrog. And it's based on a Targum, <coughs> which says on the Eitzah Das, it was Meragek, it was, it was beautiful, and that's the Lushan Esrog, and the Ramban says that was the Eitzah Das Targum. So we learn, that makes much more sense in this Petrina that she's learned, this is the Eitzah Das. Now listen to this. So let's understand a little bit about what kind of a tikkun is happening over here with this esrog? She didn't eat it, and how we use it on the Abba Mini when we put it together with the other three Mini. It's very interesting. Now, the, the, the point is as follows. If you look at the Psukim, after Adam was, received his punishment for having eaten, so too the earth, the Adama, was also punished. The earth was punished also. And the Mephoshim will say, you know what? The earth was punished for what it did early on the third day of creation, that it brought out, it was told, the Psukim say, to make a tree, all the trees, that the taste of the tree and the taste of the fruit should be the same. So you know what it did? It just made that the taste of the fruits, and it didn't make the same taste as the tree. Okay? That means, originally Hashem said to make that there should be a tree, the bark of the tree, which obviously either you'd have to cook it to get the taste or whatever, and the tree itself, and the fruit was supposed to have the same taste. The Adama, the earth changed. 
which is difficult to understand, but it changed. And it just made peros, fruits, but they're not similar in taste to their, to their, um, to the, to the tree itself. Now, listen to this carefully. Why did the Adama do this? It's difficult to understand. You got to see it from a Kurdish borough. So the morale explains as follows. I'll paraphrase it to understand the morale guerrilla. He says like this. He says, however, I'm the, the, uh, the, the Shemayim Va'aretz, the Aretz, the land, this world is in its essence missing. The Kurdish Baruch who created a world and the world by being, since it's a creation, is chaser. It's missing something. It's not perfect. It's not like Shemayim. Shemayim is the, has perfection. The Aretz doesn't have perfection. So the Aretz tainted. The Aretz said, you know what? The land said, to the extent that I'm not perfect and I'm not a full reflection of the Shemayim, I'm not a full, full reflection of heaven. So how do you expect me, that's my lotion, how can it be possible for me to bring out a tree which gives out fruits which should be a complete reflection of, the, of, of their church, of their root. The root of the tree, so to speak, is the, is the tree itself, the wood part, and the, the fruit is coming out from there. How can I bring out a fruit that's going to taste like the root, the, the, the tree? It, it's not possible because I don't, as it were, I'm not a perfect reflection of my root. That's me Shemayim. Does everyone follow? That's a very, very, very deep idea because you know what it's really saying? The morale is explaining, the way the morale is explaining is the same thing with the, the mead of the Levana, the fact that Levana went and became small. This world has to have a place for free will. In order for it to have a place for free will, they, this world has to have a mocking for an assayan, a place for a chat, test. So it can't be perfect. So it's a word the Adam is saying, I can't make a tree and a fruit the same because then there'd be perfection. There'd be no room for free will. And the same thing with the mead of the Levana when the Levana chooses to be smaller. The, 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 the moon is reflected light. How can the moon be a complete reflection of the sun? There's no moon for free will. But the, the morale doesn't mention the free will, but that's the pshat. Now listen. The Chora, the ace has got to, the, the Adam has got to, Gavaldico, he, he's, he's right. I'm not a perfect thing. How can I bring out something which is perfect? So I saw more de Kazakh. There's a shloh. The Shlomo explains as follows. Oh, by the way, so no, the Pshat and the Maral is, now when man sins, he sins. So it's that chisoran, it's the fact that there's no perfection is why he's sinning. So maybe the Adama also gets, gets cursed. The Shlomo says a slightly different thing, but he answers up a question. The Shlomo says like this. He says, first of all, he says, the Adama was not sinning when it changed. When the earth decided not to bring out the fruits, the same thing as the, as the tree, it wasn't sinning. It knew that Hashem himself was going to put away the Oregonas. There's a special primordial light which you, was used during creation for the first week and was put away Moti Shabbos for the Tzadikim Lasid Lavo. That ore was put away. So too, the Kayach, the ability for me to be Motsi, to take out fruits, which would taste like the, 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 the tree, I'm putting it away. Meaning, that ain't a chanami. The truth is, I'll piteb, according to the rules of nature, so to speak, it's not possible. The tree, the fruit can't taste like the tree. But la it was supposed to be above the rules of nature. It was a kayak, which was similar to the oregano, similar to that primordial, primordial, primordial ore, by primordial light. It's a lamala minatev above the rules of nature. The, the, the earth was given the ability. It could have brought out that the, the two were equal. The two tasted the same. It really could have been that way. It would have been lamala minatev, but he didn't. He chose not to do it because he didn't think it was fitting for the Rishoyim, just like the Oregonos, which is an unbelievable thought. He says that really the original thought of creation is that the safer and the tick of the safer. Which means that neshama and our goof, the goof and the neshama, both are supposed to be kodesh. The goof is kodesh and the neshama is kodesh kedoshim, and that's the way it's going to be lost in love. That's the way it's going to be in the future. The goof is also going to be kodesh, but it's going to be a a, 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 a cleat to hold the neshama. But it's going to be kodesh. 
the neshama will be Kaddish Kedashim. Be holy of holies. This being said, so he says like this. So when, 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 now you got a picture. So Chav is out here, and she, they, they hear that you can't eat from the Eitzadas. Eitzadas. So Chava thought, hmm, you can't eat from the Eitzadas. And she thought, can't eat from the Eitzadas. And therefore you can't eat from the, uh, the, 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 the Paris also. So comes along the Nacha, she says, no, 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 you got it all wrong. You can't, you can't eat, you, 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 you're allowed to eat from the pre. You're allowed to eat from the pre. You're allowed to eat from the fruit. You're just not allowed to eat from the AIDS. The AIDS is so holy because it's a place, it's this, 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 this shores which you, and all the other trees in the world, the tree and the fruit taste differently. This is one free t- tree where they're both were the same. That's what he adds on. The Eitz Adas Toivara, he says, the tree and the fruit tasted the same. By the way, you should just know that is the way an Esrog is. The Gemara says that it, by an Esrog, Eitz appears Shava. The taste of an Esrog and its, and its wood are similar. Now, I've never tasted the wood of an Esrog. I never tasted, well, I have had Esrog jam, but I've never tasted the wood of an Esrog. But that's what Chazal said. But it says that the, 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 all the, 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 the the Shlach says, any of the eights in the eights of Das Tovarah, they both were the same, so it was different. So therefore, Chav was confused. She said, this is different than all the other trees. So therefore, they may be, so the Nachash told her, no, you're not allowed to eat from the eights, but you can eat from the fruit. She says, no. Oh, yeah, and he pointed out to her that it says twice in the, in the Pesukim, don't, don't, don't eat twice. So the second time is coming, not eat, but you shouldn't touch. So then she thought, oh, you can't touch the holier part, which is the tree, and you can't eat from the pre. So he pushed her into the tree. He was not. He pushed her into the tree. Saw that her shot was wrong. She didn't die. So then she figured, oh, the Nachash is right. The reason the Kurdish Barco doesn't want me to eat from this is like it says in the Pasuk, because he doesn't want me to be like Elohim. He doesn't want me to be like God. He doesn't want me to have knowledge and be great like him and create worlds and destroy worlds. And then she ate. And by the way, the Nachash's idea was that she shouldn't eat. He figured like this, she's a, she's a normal woman. She's going to save it to Chava. She's, Chava's going to give it to Adam. Adam will eat, and, she, and he'll marry Chava. That's what it says. But then what happened? Chava ate. She realized she made a mistake. So then she quickly gave it to Adam. Why? Because she didn't want Adam to marry somebody else either. That's done parenthetically, but that's unbelievable. But Al Kapani. What do we see over here? The reason why there was a mistake, says the Shla. The reason why there was a mistake is because this tree was different than all the other trees of the world. But I want you to understand one thing. That means that originally it could have been the same. But what happened? She ate from it. What was she meant to do? She was supposed to look at it. You weren't supposed to eat it. This was a tree. This was a tree that the, it was reflective of. That's why it was so beautiful. Got a pick. It was Ace Rapirio Shava, means that the tree and the fruit was the same. That means it was a complete reflection, so to speak, of Shemayim. It was the most beautiful fruit you could possibly imagine. Because it, it didn't have, it was like the tree. This is unbelievable. That's why it was so attractive. That's why it was so, so Taiva. So what was she supposed to do? Don't touch. Don't, no, no, excuse me. Don't eat. Don't eat. The Ace of Das Toivirah was unbelievable perfection, but it had a place where you can make a mistake. What was the mistake? Eat. If you eat, that's a horrible mistake. Why did they eat? Says Rabbi Yitzchai Zechava, the reason they ate, Adam ate, because they thought, if Hashem gave us a tree, she wanted to partake in this pleasure. If Hashem gave us a goof, so we have to eat. The goof needs to eat. They didn't understand that the the, the the goof could have had it, the nizun could have gotten its sustenance from the neshama. The Torah itself would have given its sustenance. So when we when she ate, that was the biggest mistake, as he puts it inside the cover. She went after what's called chachmas chitzonius. There's chachmas eternus, there's chachmas chitzonius, meaning there's the world of teva, there's the world of nature. She chose nature. She chose the physical world. She chose that that's the way this world has to function. She didn't understand that this world can be a complete reflection of the divine. The tree and the, 
and the fruit can be the same. They can be mamish, be, 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 be the same taste. But, her, but in this tree, the Eitzadas Toivara, there's a Makam Nesoyan, there's, there's a place of test. Don't touch. Excuse me, don't eat. You're not allowed to eat. Now, you know, I just noticed here. Look what this, what the, what the, 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 this prayer says. I didn't parcel it. Vayom pasalti or ain't mitzvah. O kashem sheyeshli hanah bepitim zeh. When is she getting this hanah, this woman? Afterwards, she's getting hanah. Kach hayisi ne'anesi miliros eitzadas. I would have had hanah from watching, looking at the eitzadas. She's saying an unbelievable thing. She's saying, it's not just, listen to the way this is phrased. It's not just that you can't eat it. She would have had an from it. You know, it's everything there was to get from this, this beauty, this reflection of Shemayim. It was there, but just by looking at it, by looking at it, that would have been giving her something because that would have been having Hanar from that ruchnius. But no, she wasn't supposed to touch it. She wasn't supposed to eat it. But they made a mistake. They thought they had to eat it. So now, when it comes to Sukkis, what do we do? We have the Esro. She was, she was what's called Kotsubinatiya. She separates the Esro. By eating from the Esro, she separated it. She was removed it from the divine. We have now to put it together. It's the last os. It's the last letter in God's name. You put it together with the other three and you shake it. Who is now shaking it? Adam. I would just like to go back to my original thought and I'll finish. We pointed out before that Lachara, there's two processes happening. There's a process of the Shlosh Vagolim, which is a process of <coughs> the the, tfua, the, 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 the 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 growth of plants, the times of the year, and there's also the process of being close to the Kodesh Baruch Hu, Selusa Nusa, living in the shade of Hashem, Anani And we said there are two different things, but you know what? They really co- they come together. Because if you think about it, what's the whole purpose of be- praying for water? What's the whole purpose of praying for, we pray for, on Pesach, we get, we get, we get Tzvua, we get Paris on Shvuas, and we, get, we, we pray for rain. We want to live. We want to live. We want to have a life. We want to have a physical life. We want every all the blessings. But who's entitled to those blessings? Who's entitled to having this bria? If it's not the Adam, if it's not the man, after he's been forgiven, after he's free for sin, after he is fulfilling the rutsin of the Boreolam and his creation. It's only after we get to Yom Kippur that we can truly ask for physical water, not only be in a spiritual sense together with the Kaddish Baruch Hu, do Nisach HaMayim, which is bringing the Shechina, but it's much more. We want simple water, but who's entitled to that simple water? Who's entitled to having life? If it's not the Adam, if it's not Klai Yisrael after they've been forgiven with the Eitz Adas Torah, and excuse me about Egel Zav and understanding in front of the Kodesh Baruch. However, we have the Abishta, we have him, we have him another 24 hours, then we're going to have Shmini Yatseris, which is it's another step, it's number eight. Chaperayin, Shoshana Rabba, Chaperayin, is that they shake the lulav tomorrow, the aravis, the mitzvahs that are left, sit in that sukkah, sit in that sukkah, and then Bezer Hashem, we internalize the ability not only to break ourselves and to, to mishabit ourselves and realize all of is not what it's all about, but also to live with the Kaddish Baruch Hu, to live in the world of forgiveness, to live with kapara from the ego, from the ego azav, and then Bezer Hashem will be zaycha to the, all the blessings of this world which we will use and give back to our creator.